Hi once again. Sorting out a few more lamps. They're not ancient, but they're a few years old. Let's quickly go through them. First one I'll lay my hands on is a three light lamp. American GE 100, 200, 300 watts. Um, this type of lamp was used in the uh, a, a type of floor floor lamp standing that I've got in the other room. You've got your contacts, double contact at the base with the normal GES cap or a uh, mug or cap. You've got two filaments in there. 100 watt and the 200 and together they make 300 so you can either have 100, 200 or 300 burn the base down that's obviously the heat of the actual filaments next up we come a bit more modern. This is um, Toshiba's effort of LED lamp. I think it's showing up on there. 5.5 watt. Gives about as much light as a 40 watt bulb. You've got the CE mark on there. And this one is in fact made in Japan. It should be a good quality lamp. And I say uh, Toshiba were at the forefront, the forefront of lamp manufacturing. The company was limited by Edison in the very early days. And I've got one of their catalogues. It's all it's all in <laughs> Japanese. But it shows you the lamps that they made then, which were very similar to the early lamps that you see today. And of course Toshiba in loads of things, from lifts, computers, medical equipment, you name it, they make it. So it's quite a big company. Here we have much shown a similar one before. Typical American lamp, uh, GE, 75 watt, and it's uh, a white, coated white. The filament is, doesn't look too well actually. It's intact still, but it's it looks like it's been knocked a bit. But that's a worker. Here we have a lamp by a maker or a name which some of you might remember from the old days. So I can bring this up so it shows it. I know it's only part of the etch that's still there, but the name we see at the top is Pifco. They were made or had made for the mainly Chinese stuff or Hong Kong, uh, various electrical things, torches, toys, you name it, often their names on it, Pifco. And I say there's no reason why it shouldn't be on one of these lamps. I think it's probably about 25 watt and so the etch is partly gone. Normal, bo uh, normal ball type bulb with the bayonet cap. Sylvania. This is American lump. The box has been a little bit worse for wear, pre-tested light bulb, Sylvania. 
with unmatched quality and performance, they say. And let's have a little, little look at the bulb. It's one of the, they, they call a showcase bulb. The filament goes the whole length of the lamp. This one's intact. In fact, I would say it's never been used. Never been used. And the supporting wires are insulated from the actual framework, which is actually one of the contacts to the actual filament. And two little sort of clips, if you like, or side spaces hold the filament or the structure central. Very simply made lamp but nevertheless a worker. Sometimes they used to have a name on the top but that one hasn't. These were made by the main makers G, G E um, uh, Westinghouse and of course Sylvania. Showcase lamp, I think it's about 30 or 40 watt. No wattage shown on the on the box, but I think that's the kind of wattage it would be. And these were actually made in USA, which was quite nice. So many now are made abroad, Taiwan, China. Which you know they've you lose you lose a lot of things. Anyhow, here we have bulb and box. Can't mistake the name Phillips. Details on it: two twenty two thirty. E40 made in Holland. It's 200 watt matte, which means it's uh, frosted in various languages. Made in Holland. Let's have a look at the bulb. There's the bulb. It's got a nice clear etch on it as well. Trying to what? I think that's showing up okay. Uh, GES base or a Margol base fully working. In fact, I don't think I don't think it's ever been used. Next lamp, similar size, not quite as large. And the packet was in. Photo flood. These were intended to be really overrun. Uh, they were very bright. It's got the notes on it, caution and all that, which I'll leave on there so it comes up. Um, the actual length of life on these was very short, so this was, I've, I've never used it, I've, I've never tried it out. It works, you can tell that I've got an AVO meter, there on there. It says, it's got a number on there, it's got a number, and it also there's average life six hours. So that shows it does not last very long. 
and it's used for photography, lighting, either cinema or um, stills in a proper arrangement where it can be run safely. Long neck tube a uh, lamp again, typical American screw base. Photo flood. Now this one's still got its box. Vogisa. Let's see what it's got on the side there. In German. Glim Lampen Clear or Clear Clear. Let's have a look at the bulb. I've seen one of these before actually. I didn't realise I had one already in a box. A neon. A neon beehive lamp again. The base looks it looks very much like a Russian a type of base. When I say Russian, the the kind of metal they've used. It doesn't look that good. But anyhow, it, it's, um, as far as I know, it's a worker. That's got a resistor in the base. It's got a bit of information on the top, which shows the name. And the voltage, 220 volts, which was the continental uh, voltage. Ours was 230, and theirs was 220, so it would work over here quite well. So there's the way it's made up. Glass sleeves put over the connecting wires. So they didn't actually light up or glow. Wattage of these were about 5 watts and very similar to our uh, English Osglim or Osram beehives. Lays. I'm pretty sure Lays is a Spanish firm. No other information on the box. Well, at the end there is. Sofito, and you've got the length. Opal. That's the uh, the way it's it, it's coated with that white. 220, 230 volt, 60 watt. Now these and would be recognised particularly by uh, one of my friends in uh, France who puts up some interesting bulbs. He's actually showed one of these. Um, He's connected it up and had it working. I'm not working any of these because it's, they're, they're all workers. But um, the name on there lays. Now these were typically French. I know this one may be made in Spain. But they were typically French. And they fitted into a lamp arrangement which you had over like a shaving mirror or a lampware. You, you want to attach it to to above a mirror or something, a bathroom or something like that. And they're often made by a company called Lino Light. Now, I know Lino Light was in England and it's also in France. Our tube bulbs or strip light lamps were slightly different to this. But having said that, I've got in the collection 
a lamp from the Air Force or the Air Ministry which was clear glass slightly wider but the same length and the same type of caps. So, you know, whether it was from England or from France, I don't know, but the ones, the early ones were made here in England. But in France, as I say, these were quite popular. I don't know if they're still used. I imagine they are. They were, they were called, well, one company was Line of Light. The reason at the end there is to keep the cap on. It's worked out. It's worked a bit loose. Photographic lamp, or, or projector lamp as they say here. Projector. What's around projector? And a lamp out of that box. This one here. It's got the large pre-focus type base or cap. Never been used. The filament is typical of a projector lamp, up and down if you like. Very heavy wires as well. So these got quite bright. On the end you've got an etch which is in perfect condition. Which hopefully will show up. And uh, this would have been run base down. So the heat, if it's got, was worked on its side, the glass would probably melt. So these were, it said, I think it actually says on there, cap down. Yeah, it's got cap down. 115 volts at 1000 watts. So that is quite bright. It would be quite bright. I've never used it. It's just one for for the collection. Now coming up, I think there's two left. Oh, I'll show this is a modern one. I don't even know where this, this one came from. But it's got the Wilco name, which is a a shop in England. Um, they normally sell a cheaper range of, of stuff. And um, the lamp in it is a quartz halogen inside of a normal envelope. Nothing else on it. I'll give you the size, quite small. Quartz envelope is put in inside the lamp. Standard base bayonet cap. On here it's got oh, it's you the lumens halogen bulb. Two forty volt. You the key features as well. Seventy watt, which equals ninety two watt, if it had been a tungsten. So they did give a little bit more light. Wilco. Lastly, before I melt, because it's blooming hot in here, we have a compact fluorescent Omicron 40 watt bayonet cap, 240 volts, 50 hertz. The uh, the common market or European sign. Comparison to tungsten lamps. Power saving and the efficiency. This is on efficiency B. If it was um, LED, it'd probably be on A, but B is good. And the lamp.
there's the lamp fairly large looks quite a well made one as well but I suppose if you could say uh, these compact compact fluorescents are going out because LED have taken over so it's worth holding on to any of these that you might have because they will become a curio in years to come anyhow I hope you've enjoyed watching a few of these lamps um, any comments please make um, I will add some more next time and take it from there Anyhow, once again, thanks for watching. And um, yeah, I'm going to clap somewhere because I'm baking. It's like an oven in here. Um, one of my oh no, she's not going to go up there. It's all right. I thought I was going to be joined by one of my cats. Anyhow, thanks again. Thanks for watching.